Loneliness, I think, is the disease of the 90s. Probably began in the 80s. I wonder if people in London realise that the width of the main road is getting smaller, about 10 feet smaller, with cars parked all along the roads opposite each other. Each car, I suppose, being about five feet wide. I feel depressed! I left my scarf in Euston Station yesterday <coughs> while I was having a cup of coffee with my Russian friend, Sergei. I can't understand how I forgot it because when we left, it was quite cold and raining. I started to blame Sergei because he was in a very tense mood. But when he is in this mood, he can become exhausting. I didn't notice because I was distracted by his mood. I had to remind myself that I've forgotten things before without Sir Gay being around, and even so, I still feel uptight with him. And why should I be so depressed about losing a scarf with all the terrible things going on in this country, or even in this block of flats, which I know does go on because I, I hear the screams and shouts of abuse and sometimes see syringes lying about. But it was such a good scarf, a scarf I really liked. I went back to Houston Station to see if anyone had handed it in. I spoke to the table clearer, who I recognised from yesterday. <coughs> I got the impression when he went into the staff office that he knew something about it. But he came out empty-handed and said... The customer had taken it. How could the customer have taken it when he was in the staff office? You mean a staff member has taken it? No, a customer. But it wasn't his scarf. Well, it had been there for a long time. On his bag was written customer care. He said he was looking after his customers, giving them scarves that didn't belong to them. He clarified it was in the exact position I'd been sitting in. The trouble was he wasn't English. I think he was from India and he didn't speak very good English. It must have been staff, because how would a customer have known that there was a scarf in the staff office? No, a customer! I had to walk away because I was just repeating myself. I was getting more and more frustrated, and he was talking faster and faster, waving his hands and becoming hysterical. to my surroundings. I feel like Sidney Carton in A Tale of Two Cities. <laughs> Nothing is of any value. Nothing really matters. I've always noticed when you say something, sometime later the opposite occurs because some things do matter, like my feelings, which were hurt the other day when a woman said to me sort of abruptly, go over, go over so-and-so, talk to her about it. She had pushed in while I was talking to somebody. And at the same time, she was stuffing a sandwich in her mouth, like a praying mantis swaying from side to side, trying to hypnotize its victim. It was a tone of voice that upset me, sort of dismissing me. I was so angry, I walked away and waited for her to stop talking so I could talk to her about it. When she finished, I went up and pointed out what I felt about it. She grimaced and apologised in a way. Another chap came up and heard some of the conversation. I'd previously spoken to him about self-esteem, and I can imagine what he said. Oh, he's got low self-esteem. The thing that worried me more was that I couldn't let it go. I was so angry. I felt I'd been too soft on her, and I felt I wanted revenge. I was so hurt. Where did all this rage come from? I could have murdered her. But I also realised if I'd done so, these feelings would have remained. It disabled me all day. And I wonder in society what happens when people are unable to let go of their hurts and lash out at people. Not possibly out of cruelty, but because they feel hurt or put down. When some long-forgotten memory reawakens, when someone says something or acts in a certain way. John Lennon said, I'm a violent man, that's why I talk about love. It's always the opposite that surfaces when I regret my violence. understand.
understandable then. If all these hurts are in human beings, that whole nations go to war over it, that possibly sometime in history they were attacked, raped, killed, etc. And each soldier has his own hurt to take out on others, each taking their own rage to war. It's 6.30 a.m. I've been writing this for an hour and a half. Another statement from psychologists is that people who get up very early in the morning are I depressed. Was the last I a Freudian slip? This psychology can drive one to start to have one's head examined. I'm coming back to the subject of self-esteem again. The spiritual world, or higher consciousness, or God, or whatever you want to call this other state of being which is based on love and is altruistic. Self-esteem doesn't exist because no judgment of you or your value to society, either by yourself or by others. You are just a being of light that exists to learn about the lights, like uh, Tinkerbell in Peter Pan. If people or yourself stop believing in your light, i.e. self-esteem, then your light starts to go out. Because of this, Tinkerbell started to die. And it's only your own self-belief that's going to bring it back to life when you start to believe it. Strangely enough, if you believe in your own life and worth, other people will see it, believe it, but it starts to exist. Because the children believed in Tinkerbell, her light became brighter. She grew stronger and started to live again. As the mystics ask, can we create our own reality? What does it avail me if I create writing good enough to be published? Or if I am able to prophesy or gain knowledge or have power over other people or multiply wealth if I have not love? All these are as useless as a stupid ripple in a bloody ocean. I saw a tramp this morning. I have seen him before walking across Camden Town. To me, he looks very destitute. Long hair matted down his back. No socks. Shoes over on one side. Worn down. Dirty. Unkempt clothes. He seems to be walking slower than ever. He has an Alsatian dog with him at all times. The dog seemed to be very concerned about him because he kept looking up at him every few seconds. Suddenly, I was quite taken aback because it dawned on me that this dog loved this human being when probably nobody else did. And I suppose human beings have to get love somewhere. If they can't get it from other humans, they get it from animals. If they can't get it from either, for their own personal reasons, they turn to God or television or drink or whatever. Feel awful, like the bottom's fallen out of me, no energy, dragging my body around like a ton weight. I'm trying to work out why I'm like this. Is it Camden Town always so depressing and crowded and exhausting? <laughs> why do I get a feeling of deja vu? I take away the traffic in my mind and I'm back to Charles Dickens' day when he lived here with the beggars, the dirt, the sordidness and drunkenness. Or is it the weather? It's so schizophrenic, changeable, sunny, rain, cold, a greyish colour covering everything. Or is it the negative news I can't escape from? If I put classic FM or melody radio on, I still churn it out every half hour. I once asked Melody Radio if it was some law that if you're granted a franchise to broadcast, you must give the news every half hour. The response was... No, I don't think so. She couldn't comment any further because she was just the telephone operator. <laughs> I suddenly thought 
She probably was the cleaner, just passing and picked up the phone because it was ringing. <laughs> but it was quite late at night when she answered. Or is it being alone for so long that's so exhausting? I wonder if Robinson Crusoe ever felt this. I read once that there was a real life Robinson Crusoe living on an island somewhere. I can't write anymore! This is bloody ridiculous! I feel so weak and apathetic. I still feel uptight about Melody Radio's indifference to my complaint yesterday about negative news. So, I have written to the BBC Complaints Department. Dear sir or madam, I have a question to ask. Is the prerequisite of the broadcasting license the radio stations must give frequent updates of the news? As a regular listener of mainly BBC programmes, I find it undermines me. I try and turn me off, but it's generally too late. Is it any wonder there's so much anger and depression around when this negative news is spread into our subcultures daily? Give us peace! Be an emotionally friendly broadcaster. Make radios two or three news free. It is well known that stress is one of the biggest problems in society today. Inform listeners that regular news updates will be available on other radio stations. By making news free radio stations, you will be helping society and citizens and not undermining them. Yours? Stressfully? Curse on! Some days I intentionally don't wash. The, the reason is, it gives me a sense of freedom from boring ritual and mechanical existence, which I feel is the cause sometimes of, of exhaustion. We need to do different things and Use our imagination to stop this passivity, which I feel is the cause of depression. I sometimes wonder if the universal mind really exists. Because something happened to me that makes me think maybe it does. I was walking to Camden Town one day, and I saw one of my mother's old friends. We always talk, and sometimes I go to see her in a flat. On seeing her come towards me, I felt so glad to see her, I wanted to put my arms around her. What happened was when we met, we both put our arms around each other. 4th of January. I've left out the rest of December. It was horrendous. <laughs> Including Christmas, which I spent alone, like Robinson Crusoe. Sometimes I think I'm a broken man. A sick man. That's why I lead this precarious life. A life cut off from intimacy. Because of a feeling of inadequacy. I don't have the grounding or the capacity to be involved with another. Sometimes I think that this is self-indulgent and pessimistic. But even though I think this, I don't challenge this pessimistic outlook with positive action. I have a dread that it might actually be true. That I'm a flawed and defective human being. I sort of checkmate myself, caught in a web of my own terror. I don't think I'm alone in this. I think there are millions of Robinson Crusoe's out there. 